We made our way over to the kitchen. Uh, Michelle Brown joining us right People now. People are going to get the idea that I'm like good in the kitchen. And you it's are probably good in the not kitchen. My, uh, I, I love this kind of stuff, but you know, sharing you know fancy recipes and all that's probably not my uh, strong. Suit. But we're talking about preservation, yes. especially when it comes to food. We love the fresh produce we're still getting from farmers markets, even if our gardens, if you're so inclined and a, a wonderful gardener out there. But we want it to last, or we want to use it in different ways because just using the same old throw it in a salad it gets boring after a while. Yeah, and this and this time is busy harvest mm -hmm. time because kind of a lot of things are coming into, into season and I love to fill my pantries with things that I've grown myself or that you've gotten at the farmers market mm -hmm. from local growers and uh, there's yeah I think there's a little bit of um, sometimes fear that comes into preservation of foods um, when and you think I don't canning. want people to approach it that way. I think, yeah, you, there's, uh, let's first just talk about methods of preserving. Okay, let's do that. Our foods. Um, we can freeze them, mm -hmm. which is very which easy. Which is the, one of the most easy, common ones, easy, period. Easy, yeah. Yes. We can can them. Yeah. Um, and you can do water bath canning. You can do pressure canning. So it depends on what types of foods that you're uh, wanting to can. You can dehydrate. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's very easy. And that has a really long shelf life. And you can also ferment which is also another okay. very simple process. Hmm. Um, so, and I, but I think people are worried about, um, you know, sometimes there's, there's so much out there that, oh, be careful about this or it'll spoil or whatever. So just, you know, I think it's important for people to do some research, uh, try, you know, a few things, you know, start with something small and something What would you easy. suggest for somebody who has never really done this before? What would be a safe one to do? I always recommend things with uh, <clears throat> like a pickle, you really can't because there's vinegar involved, and that, that helps with the with the preservation. So any sort of pickling, fermenting is a is a nice thing to start with. And so let's talk about that process and what you brought in today. Okay. Because fermenting for some folks kind of scares them. Okay, <laughs> yeah, it really and but does. it's been think about it. It's been around as forever, a way to preserve yeah. food forever. Um, and basically, what you're doing is taking a um, you know a vegetable like sauerkraut. That's probably one of the best ones to start with if you're wanting to ferment something. So basically, cabbage. It's cabbage, yeah. and then you're putting salt on it, and mm -hmm. you're creating a brine, and then you're making sure that that cabbage stays covered in that brine and creating an anaerobic environment. So I just do my fermenting in jars. Uh, make sure that they're you know they've got their that that stuff stays submerged in uh, uh, its brine, and then it sits for a couple of weeks, and then that's when the you know the goodies the happen. Magic and then happens. yeah, and you can let it sit for as long as till you get that flavor, depending on how you know sour. Do you need to put anything else in taste. there beside the salt, or mm -mm. is it just you, the salt? I, it's the just salt, the salt, water, and, and, and then and that the whole fermentation process really? that gives it that. That's that's all it is. Okay. Yes. But you, and there's things that you can get for say, your jars. You brought that some help other with that options out here. What are other op besides? We all think of sauerkraut when we think of Fermenting. This is kimchi. kimchi. This is another uh, fermented uh, food, and okay. this is with uh, a napa cabbage, and you can put some carrots in it. It's a little bit of a spicier version okay. uh, of a kraut, and the fermented foods um, they last for a really long, long time. time. Yes, and they're just they kind of get better. As now, they once, once you ferment them, you seal them. Do you have to vacuum seal them or, or hot bath them? What do you have to do with them? Once I the, put them in the fridge. And, but you can. That's a, that's a process okay. that you can. I know my mom, she makes a lot of sauerkraut and she'll uh, let them ferment and then she'll put them in a water bath to can them and seal the, the lid mm -hmm. uh, on them so that then they can just sit on the shelf versus having to be refrigerated. Okay, got it. Okay. So different options out there. Yes. What else did you yes. bring in with you today? And then, so freezing foods oh. is very easy yeah. um, as well. So berries, um, there's things, uh, some vegetables freeze nicely, other vegetables, you know, you need to blanch them first, mm -hmm. um, you know, putting them in Ooh. some hot water and then what cold water. What would those water. include? Um, like green beans, um, and some of those are ones that you want to blanch, blanch first. first. Okay. Yeah, blanch right. them, right. and These then freeze them. These are a little bit, so I'm going to throw them in No, the they're fine. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to make a pie later. Oh, good. Think, so. <laughs> no worries. Good. But freezing your foods, you want to be sure um, when you get your produce, you know, wash it. Um, I always recommend doing some sort of a, a wash, whether it's a vinegar water solution mm -hmm. or a baking soda and water solution. So make sure your produce is nice and clean, clean. before you start, you know, your preservation process. Make sure things are nice and dry um, as well and then, you know, just which met whichever method you're going to, you know, you, go you, about using. If you try to freeze them and they're not nice and dry, Yeah, you don't clump. want them to be wet. Yeah. yeah. So, and you want to yeah. get, if you're going to freeze things, get them as fresh as possible and throw them in the freezer. And right. that's the best way to, to do it. Absolutely. Yes. And you also have some other canning options. I do. Um, there's lots of different things, you know, like canning pickles is yep. uh, a very easy uh, way to 
<clears throat> to start with canning. I also preserve things um, like relishes. You can produce or can carrots. Um, I do an apple pie filling because oh, I have a lot of um, apples to work with. And you're always looking for different ways to preserve them. Like I had um, been, I have more pickles than I know what to do with. And <laughs> yeah, I can only eat so many pickles in a year. So you try to come up with other ways to preserve things. So I just recently did um, like cucumbers in the dehydrator. So you want to play around I with different dehydrated. ways. Cucumbers <laughs> I'm sure it takes a little while because there's so much water content. Water, right. right. So let's talk about that option because I think that's so fun. And the kids, anytime you can substitute a chip for something that's a little bit healthier, including like a veggie, truly a veggie chip, yeah. is an amazing thing. And the packed of uh, flavors, the flavors that's they're in just there. very, very simple. So um, how would we begin to even do that? If we're looking at this and I'm like, how am I going to make this? <laughs> into a chip? Into a chip. What, you just it, take your mandolin world? or a knife and you want to get some nice thin slices. I recommend eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch in your slice um, and then put them in the dehydrator uh, and dry them. They usually take, you know, anywhere from, depending on the temperature that you're using, uh, anywhere from eight hours to 12 hours mm -hmm. and you can test them. Um, you want to make sure that you get all of the moisture out of them and that's what's going to extend the uh, life of the produce that you're so dehydrating you're going as well. From this guy to just a nice thin slice of a uh, cucumber and literally laying it on the tray of your dehydrator and then you're eventually after probably a day or so going to have yeah your you cucumber have your chips sip. and then you can mix um, I put a little bit of olive oil you can mix some spices and some seasonings on them to different flavors I've done barbecue salt and pepper um, and you can dry them some like them really crispy do an mm -hmm. extra dry um, a lot of your dehydrated foods are going to be a little bit chewier but um, like I love to dry out tomatoes tomatoes it's Those a, are and so fun. The and nice thing about dehydrating your foods is they really do have a long shelf life mm -hmm. and they don't require refrigeration. They don't, you know, you can just set them, dehydrate them well, um, store them in uh, nice, uh, you know, And this cool, is dry probably places. one of the most popular ones here when you do bananas, banana especially chips. when they're on sale. And the best part about this is if you do them yourself, they're not going to be full of sugar that they are if you buy them in the store prepackaged because yes. they coat them with sugar. Yeah, and you don't they, want that. And they add things, you know. So y this way you know mm -hmm. what you're you're eating. Eating, you know where it came from, um, and you're 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 in more you're in control of your of your foods and what you're feeding your family. And kids love to get involved with this. This is an excellent way to uh, you know get them started on uh, some some good healthy. Is this a little sweet potato here? That's a sweet potato. Sweet so potato? we can do sweet potato chips, which are easy to now, do. No, one thing to favorite. keep in mind with sweet potatoes, I want if you do have pets that are out there, if you take a sweet potato and you take it and you cut it l the long way on the mandolin. You can dry them and then use them for your dogs. Your dogs love sweet potatoes. Yeah. They really do. It's like candy for them. So you might want to well, I'll give keep you a jar of these and you can take okay. them home and that feed works. your pooch. <laughs> there you go. There's right. other things too that you can, if you really want to take it to another level with, with your canning, uh, you can can soups, uh, you can can meats. I know this sometimes this looks gross to people. My mom does that all the time. But chicken it's the best and beef, thing in the world. But my family does a lot of canned meats. Um, but when, when you're dealing with, this is one that you really want to make sure that you're, you know, doing your research and educating yourself on what's involved and you're going to need a pressure canner which is different than the water bath type of canner. Okay. Absolutely and you brought in some books just and I think that's the big thing don't be afraid to do your research and uh, just do a little studying and realize how simple yeah, it can and be. Yeah and just again don't do come from a like place that. of fear with it try some simple things um, and just you know start and it'll naturally grow from there. Um, there's great resources out there. Yeah. Iowa State is a great resource for Wonderful. different um, information on canning and preserving foods um, as well as a lot of the companies that supply you with your canning materials um, and really you don't need a lot of supplies to have a good um, you know the tools you need to preserve. There and you go. The dehydrators are probably one of the the neatest tools you can have in your kitchen. Oh, so, it yeah. is. You know, and, and they're a little bit pricier. There's different kinds that you can get, smaller ones, larger ones, but they are, you can do so many things with them. I, I can dry, you know, I make fruit leathers. We make say, our, you have your fruit leather here on one of the shelves that we've talked about yes. before with uh, our food segments, which are uh, tasty and perfect for kids to take to school and different kinds of snacks and fun things going on. It's great to, a way to use things. You don't have waste. And, and you, you can know do what paper goes mache. in it. I can do paper mache in there. <laughs> I can do all kinds of things. I can dry flowers. <laughs> we can dry leaves, natural material. I mean, it really has a lot of uses and they last a long time. It's a good investment, uh, I, I believe, for the kitchen. Wonderful. So you're able to. Nice addition. There you go. So take some chances with your kitchen, and especially with all that fresh produce that we have this time. Oh, it of tastes year. so good in the winter time. Oh, yeah. That's like now, oh, if people have questions about so any nice. of this, about how to do any of this, can how, yes, how can uh, get, get in you? touch with me at Remake Life uh, on Facebook. Send me a message. I'm happy to you know point you in the right direction, give you the information you need, and. Uh, 
it's, it's really something that I encourage everybody to take a stab at in some fashion. Perfect. And it's fun at the same time. It is Perfect. fun. It's good, delicious. <laughs> 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 Great for kids' uh, lunches. The show's going from the kitchen to a renaissance fair. So.